whoa, 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 before you go, comment down below and say hi. Sheesh. It's good for us to say hi every now and then. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for February 25th, 2025. Now, after a little bit of a hiatus due to some family issues, unfortunately, my mom did come home from the hospital, so thank you all to all the thoughts and prayers, of course. We're back talking about weather. Typical stuff that we usually do here. We'll talk about the severe categorical outlook or convective outlook here over the next three days. Today, we're looking at Tuesday, not really too much, some thunderstorms, general area. Ohio Valley, tomorrow on Wednesday, could be some thunderstorms. And then we also have two different areas of thunderstorms that are possible here on Thursday. That's not really the reason why we're making this video, though. And as we look through the next, I'd say, about a week or two, uh, you'll start to see things start to shift a little bit. So right now, we're a little bit calm. We're a little bit warm. Very warm. We're actually above average with our temperatures. We'll take a look at that a little bit more in depth later on. But you can kind of see right now our next little system that tries to move on through is up here in the northeast in the Great Lakes have some rain, maybe a little bit of snow that's possible and stuff like that. That'll be sometime from Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon into Thursday. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. And then our next little, uh, I'd say, stronger storm or winter storm that could potentially be possible is this Alberta Clipper. Look at this. This storm just kind of comes all the way through from the prairies of Canada and kind of just sideswipes the northern portions of the United States as well as into portions of Ontario and Quebec. And that'll move on through into eastern Canada as well. But this is where things start to kind of build a little bit. We have a little bit of a... Yeah, little precursor all right that tries to develop here on sunday this is march 2nd that'll kind of move on through march 3rd is when things start to kind of take the next step up so the remnants of that storm moves off towards the north and east we have some snow that is potentially possible in the wake of that as well as some stuff of you know basically the remnants of what our next storm is going to be over here in the rockies as well as our new storm is going to try and then develop here on tuesday look at this we have our warm front cold front don't exactly pay attention i will say to where ex you know where exactly these lines are this could be a lot further west this could be a lot further east it just fully depends upon when it actually forms when it actually sustains but realistically speaking, there's a good chance that we're going to get some good amounts of severe weather over here from the southern plains all the way through into Dixie Alley, which is the deep south, and all the way through into the southeast. And it would likely start sometime next week, Monday into Tuesday, heading into Wednesday. Look at this. This thing becomes a lot larger. We have some snow on the northwestern side. This will continue to move on through and continue to be the case here in the northern portions of the United States. A lot of widespread severe weather that is possible here as well as this heads off into Wednesday afternoon. You can start to see it extend all the way through from portions up here in the northern mid-Atlantic all the way down into portions of Florida. This is going to be a pretty widespread storm here, and uh, some areas could indeed potentially be severe. We also have our other storm that is going to be kind of poking out here towards the end of next week as well. We're talking around the 5th into the 6th to where there could be potentially some uh, just stormy and windy conditions over here in the portions of California. That will likely be our next storm that will kind of move on through, but the exact, uh, I guess the exact information on this storm in particular is still very, very, very uh, wonky, if you will. When we get to this far out in the models, that's when things start to become a little bit inaccurate. And so now we're just basically looking at, all right, well, what's the general mode? And the general mode is we're going to have one storm that moves on through, then our second storm, and then our third storm within pretty quick succession. So definitely something to watch out with that. Here is our anomalies. Here's our temperature anomalies here. Right now, for the majority of the United States, we're talking about above average temperatures. In some portions, we have below average temperatures. But the general consensus here, at least from Tuesday into Wednesday, here's just uh, peak Wednesday, and you can see the majority of the United States, we're talking well above average. In some instances, about 25 degrees to 27 degrees above average in regards to our temperatures, at least on this map. That'll begin to kind of change, though, a little bit with our system that's moving on through on the 27th and the 28th. 
and you can kind of see that we have a lot of cold air that is going to be coming down here into the northeast as well as in towards the east coast. That'll continue to kind of be a thing here for the most part. And uh, we'll get a second, look at this, a second batch in behind that system. That is mainly because of our clipper. So our clipper kind of moves on through. Our low pressure system that comes from Canada brings in a lot of this cold air. And once again, we're talking some pretty low uh are pretty cold temperatures here in regards to the time of year we're talking about 20 degrees below average here in the portions of ontario and you know michigan portions of maybe wisconsin or even areas that are just surrounding that area as well so definitely something to note with that and then we start to get into a little bit of a phase so now we're talking the beginning of next week a lot of that cold air is really surged on through into the east coast but we have a lot of warm air that is going to be building up here in the central portions of the united states this is basically going to kind of set up for our next storm that's going to kind of move on through and you can kind of see the temperature differential between a lot of the cold air that's surging in behind that storm a lot of the warm air that is building out in front of it which is basically going to be a lot of moisture for these storms to be able to try and feed off of We'll take a look at the uh, temperatures and what specifically you could be talking about heading into uh, just really uh, peak Wednesday here. A lot of uh, pretty warm temperatures here. I'll tell you what, I was really feeling the warm temperatures here today. I got up to 60 here in southern portions of Pennsylvania. We got some areas that are even south of us that are getting into portions of the 70s and 80s. We're talking some areas here in the central plains that's going to be somewhere around the 50s and 60s. Uh, northeast, still going to be a little chilly. So uh, don't expect too, too much of a warm up here, especially since that this is probably going to be a little bit short lived for you all. So a lot of you guys sometimes say this is a fake spring or this is a, uh, the uh, unreal spring, if you will. There are some other names that I've heard. Of course, if you uh, have any more names for those, let me know in the comments down below so I could add them to my repertoire. But we have... Just a lot of cool air that's going to continue to move on through into portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast for a good bit. So we still have just a lot of that in general. Talking now here, heading into Thursday, heading into Friday, and you can see a lot of that warm air is going to start to kind of move on through into the central United States. That's going to continue to kind of sit there for a good bit. Look at this cold air that's going to start to move on through, though, from Friday into Saturday, all right? We're talking some areas that could get back as low as the 20s here into portions of the central United States into the mid-Atlantic here. As I said, keep in mind, this is a low temperature. So if you take a look at the top left-hand corner, you can see uh, that's the timing in eastern. Here we go, though, I will say... Monday into Tuesday, look at how much we're cooking down here in the central United States, in the south central portions of the United States. Temperatures in upwards of 70 to 80 degrees. Uh, that'll continue to kind of sit through even into Tuesday. We'll uh, go specifically here to Tuesday. And uh, look at this. It just continues to kind of go a little bit further north as well. That'll continue to be the case as this system shifts off further towards the east. Our open warm sector continues to be well, relatively warm, and so we can continue to anticipate the potential for some storms that are going to be possible here, basically in this general area. It's not a whole, you know, as I said, not exactly set in stone as to where we can see our major potential. My best guess is down here in the south central into the uh, southeastern portions of the United States, but we still have a lot of time between now and then before we can actually see as to what exactly is going to happen. Uh, for now, we can take a look at our total precipitation. This is our three-day precipitation map. And you can see from now all the way up until Sunday, there's not really a whole lot of stuff that happens. You can kind of see the main thing here is our clipper. Our clipper kind of moves on through. And if all that snow is melted into just water, that would be the total amount of precipitation. We don't exactly see anything until we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That's the 4th and 5th. And to which we can start to see, of course, a lot of our thunderstorms really start to rumble on through. You can also see here on the 6th, we have a lot of rain that is potentially possible over here in the portions of California as well. So definitely something to keep in mind with all of that. Uh, in addition to that, we also have our winter weather. We have our snow. We want to talk about our clipper. And our clipper is indeed going to be something 
uh, that is really noticeable here. This pink streak that just kind of comes through across portions of the prairies all the way down into the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, as well as portions of Ontario and Quebec. So definitely something to watch out for all of that in that, you know, that general area. I'm talking maybe at most a foot of snow that is possible in some of those areas. I know some of you might be looking down here in the bottom right hand corner and you see max almost 26 feet of snow. That's going to be over here in the higher elevations of the Cascade Mountains. So I really wouldn't too worry too much about it if you're, you know, in the path of this uh, clipper, if you will. Just make sure that you guys prepare accordingly. Make sure you have plans and you should be fine in that regard. Talking into our system that's going to be moving on through in the beginner stages of next week. Right now, we're kind of in a little bit of an easy pattern. Our low pressure system that kind of just meandered through along the Gulf Coast has kind of started to move off further into the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to have our next system that's going to try to move on through over the next couple of days. You can kind of see here our jet stream dips down just like this. This is what we call a trough. The opposite and the inverse of that is called a ridge. So usually in ridges we have high pressure systems and in troughs we have low pressure systems. And so you can see here our low pressure system here, our next system is moving off across the Great Lakes and that will continue to move on through and even be accompanied by another trough. Look at this. We have another trough that moves on through. This is our clipper. A little bit stronger. You can definitely tell our wind shear here aloft is a lot stronger here with a lot more reds and even some darker reds associated with that. But look at this over here off the coast of California. This is our next system after this Alberta clipper. This is going to meander on through. And the remnants of this system is going to try and form some storms here on Sunday and potentially even Monday. And as this thing comes on through, we're going to see a new a new system, a new low pressure system, a new trough that begins to develop here heading in from Monday into Tuesday and then from Tuesday into Wednesday to where we start to see some very strong shear here. I'm expecting right in front here on the right exit region of our jet stream here is to where we could potentially see a lot of our severe weather. So really just anywhere in the leading edge of this, if we were to cut this in half, on the leading edge of this area over here is where I would potentially see some severe storms. I wouldn't exactly pay too much mind to where that circle was drawn and exactly more as to where in this trough we could potentially see these storms. So if this trough were to be moved, let's say about you know 200 miles to the west, it would still be on this leading edge of this trough. It's just the trough would have been shifted and so that circle would have also been shifted as well. So definitely something to keep in mind we'll keep a close watch as to where this trough could potentially try to set up especially as we get closer and closer to that particular event we can move on through now specifically into our moisture category usually with storms you have a lot of moisture that's kind of setting up with it and we don't really have a whole lot of that until we get to this weekend watch this weekend here heading into sunday a lot of our moisture starts to kind of move on through up into portions of Oklahoma and Texas. The good news about this, though, is that there's not really an abundance of it. We're talking about, you know, 45, 50, maybe 55 degree uh, dew points here at the maximum in some of these areas. We're not expected to see too much significant severe weather, at least in that particular event, but we can see here. But once we get into Monday here, we can see we have a lot more moisture that's going to start to move on through. We have our dry line. Yes, we're starting to get into that time of year where we start to have a little bit of a dry line that begins to develop. Our cold front kind of lags on back behind the actual low pressure system as that moves on through. And then you can see here, as we move on from Tuesday into Wednesday, that moisture continues to be pretty abundant over here. And we're talking some dew point values and upwards of the mid to upper 60s, maybe even in the 70s in some areas over here. So we're definitely looking at the potential of some severe weather in some of those areas. So what can we do to look at it? Well, let's take a look at the instantaneous flash rate. This is basically looking at a bunch of lightning and this is kind of going to give us an idea as to where a lot of our thunderstorms are going to be at. So playing here, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, not really too much, Saturday, Sunday, we finally get some stuff. Look at that. 
Uh, maybe some thunderstorms over here to portions of western Oklahoma, maybe even to portions of southern Kansas and northern Texas as well. And then we can head over uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning. Some thunderstorms are sporadic in some of these areas. We're talking central Texas over into portions of southern Missouri and portions of Arkansas. That'll head on through here into Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening where we have quite a lot of thunderstorms that really start to kind of pop over here on screen and that'll just continue to shift off over from tuesday into wednesday morning and continue to shift off even into wednesday night so definitely something to watch out for a multi-day severe weather event is definitely possible can't exactly tell you the yeah, specifics as to whether or not we could potentially see you know how many tornadoes if there's gonna be large hail strong damaging winds you know etc etc the biggest thing here is just us trying to give you an idea as to when there could be some severe weather or whether or not you could be potentially seeing some changes in your general area for meteorology so once again thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Back to daily uploads now. And uh, yeah, stay safe, everyone. Peace out.